today's podcast episode, I'm having a conversation with the lovely Celeste Leilani Lazarus. And Celeste approached me and said, hey, why don't we do a podcast episode about sort of the industry, about people like having these sort of competition vibes with each other, like from a professional standpoint, um, and just everything that encompasses like putting yourself out there as a professional in the equestrian industry and all of the layers involved. So welcome to the podcast. I'm very excited to have you here. Thank you. It's so good to be back. Yeah. I feel like it's been like a hundred years have gone by from the first couple to now. It's really cool. Yeah. It's super cool. And yeah, it, it's insane. And when I look at your downloads at the moment, I feel like each episode has, I'm pretty sure the last one we did has got like 3000 downloads and the other one's got like a couple thousand. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. And like, I'm kind of like, my one of my episodes was trending really well and then you just like trumped me <laughs> I was like look I'm okay with this like this is amazing information so, <laughs> so cool. my ego was like damn but it's good <laughs> um uh-huh. so let's talk a little bit about because your business has basically really blown up and you've mm-hmm. created a lot of impact you're touching a lot of people's lives both personally and with their horses so do you want to talk a little bit about your experience with your business and how things have shifted and evolved? And then we can kind of see how things flow from there. Yeah. Um, so the cool thing is like, I'm not like, I don't even know how to start. Um, I definitely, this has kind of been in, in the cards. I'm very much a long game person. Um, and so when I kind of trashed my training business and went, went back to body work and was like, I really want to start working on these things. And my intention was always to get back out there in a very big way and to make a very big impact. Um, But I just wanted to make sure I was very, very careful on how I did it and very concise. And so I don't even, the last, the last, had the masterclass even happened on our last one? No, no, it hadn't even done that yet. Right. So like the things that I was talking about, it's everything, right. That is in the masterclass, but I was trying to be so very careful on how to break it down because one of the things that I, I found in pretty much every different, you know, whether it's rehab or development or, or whatever you want to look at and the things it's like, it wasn't broken down enough. Yes. And it's like, okay, so, okay. So you're going to teach your horse how to do a shoulder in, right. For instance, for in hand, but what are all of the key things that need to go into that horse, understanding how to do that. And like, what, mm-hmm. you know, all of these movements, like you look at classical dressage and it's like, cool, but everybody's so focused on training the movement that they're not understanding all of these little developmental pieces that get them there. And I, you know, nobody's, nobody's doing this on top of how do we functionally train a horse to prevent nerve impingement? Like that's a whole other, that's a whole other thing, but they do work hand in hand. So mm. as I was like fumbling through, like I clinicked really hard that the, like both of those years. And then I was doing podcasts and I was trying to like, start talking about this and getting the amps up in the back of my head. I'm like, okay, but before I do this masterclass, before I do this, like really taking it big, it has to be broken down. So mm-hmm. I basically worked my ass off on trying to figure out how to do that. Cause it's yeah. really hard to, to, that's a whole art form. So I did, um, kind of fumbled it down. Finally got, I scheduled the masterclass and I hadn't done it yet, which is yeah. really funny. So like, I hadn't had it figured out. And then I, and I was just trusting the process and I'm like, okay, like it's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come. And like, pretty much like the day before the masterclass hit, I was like, I got it. This is exactly yeah. how we're going to do it. And I'd been journaling and figuring this whole thing out. Mm-hmm. So it launched, had the three pillars that I talked about, which are still the mainstream. And it's like, and, and that's it really is. I'm just like, all right, so we got it. And it happened so beautifully that it was the same exact thing I've been teaching and talking about for a couple of years now. Um, but because it was broken down in that simple way, and it was so easy for people to understand. And, and I shouldn't say like easy to implement. It's simple, yeah. right? Like you've done it, you did a course on it. So like it's simple and it's not necessarily easy. You really need to kind of get the energetics of it. Yeah. And um, the way that I formulated the masterclass is kind of like a psychological uh, thing. So I didn't want to go in and just do a bunch of how-to videos because I don't believe in doing that. I think that every horse you know, has different individual needs and the way that they're going to present is going to be different. And then on top of the horse, you've got what's going on with the human. Like, can the human even hold space? Does a human have proper horse handling skills? Like, you know, there are so many different things in that. So just putting on this blanket, this thing of blanket exercises didn't feel good to me, but what did feel good was 
you know, we did our initial masterclass. It was like, we're just going to do a live Q and A. I'm going to tell you all the things that I'm working with. And then you can kind of take that back to your horse and see mm-hmm. what they say about it. Yeah. And then we've just kind of added on videos after that. But so what's been cool is there are people that have will, will join and like their feedback is like, well, then there isn't enough information. And like, I wanted these things and you didn't give it to me. And I'm like, cool. And then like, for every one person of those, there's 10 other people who have never had a one-on-one with, they've never done a one-on-one with anybody, but they, they listened to the lectures. They took notes. They actually took the time to do it, mm-hmm. which meant if they were willing to sit through and listen to the lectures and take the notes and apply the theories, they were also, those same people were also willing to sit with their horse while they were presenting this information and they got to listen to the course. And it was so cool to watch. Um, and so I always kind of like have a little chuckle and people are like, she doesn't give out enough information, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but it, that's the point, right? Mm-hmm. The point is, is to understand the anatomy, understand what's going on in your horse's body, understand what muscles to watch for mm-hmm. and ask your horse and use that as feedback. And so it's just been really rad. And so, and then once that got implemented, then I've also been the train uh, some of the trainers that I've been working with, um, that had already been kind of like handpicking in the back of my mind over the years Mm -hmm. of clinicking and working with them. They've also turned into being my apprentice trainers with this work because they've like, they love it so much and they're all phenomenal trainers in their own right. And so while the masterclass in the community was building, I've been also building these guys. And so now I have multiple people that can offer distance sessions on this stuff that can coach people through it. And it's just, it's been really cool. It's been really cool to watch. And it's like, and we're like just getting started. It's like a whole, there's a whole lot more going on. So yeah, it's really exciting and like really expansive to watch from the outside. And I think I haven't seen anything like what you've offered been offered before um, mm-hmm. and in that way. And I think um, for those of you who aren't aware with what Celeste Masterclass is about, basically she's talking about how to really work with the horse in a, in a very sort of, um, I was going to say like functional way and really focusing on the thoracic sling and also the whole body and all of the energetics and all of the pieces involved. <laughs> um, so it's a lot. Um, and she's it's doing her best to like describe the foundational pieces at play. And then really it comes back to developing that feel so that you can connect with your horses and you can help them develop their bodies in a functional way way so that they're supported to do whatever you want to do with them Mm -hmm. um so there's lots of layers and things that come up but it's been cool to see this masterclass that you've developed um grow and the amount that you offer in the masterclass and all the lives that you do and it's just a continual like it hasn't stopped at one one session you've like added in so many different offerings and free sort of like chats with other people into the class that it's been like really supportive and it's been very um inspiring to see a group of what is it at now like you said 2400 people like actually in the group yeah not, not people that have signed up and then like peruse and they're like maybe you know like we all don't like to stay in facebook groups i don't blame people not wanting to stay in facebook groups but yeah that's how many people have stayed or active in it amazing and yeah. it's been cool and I, I know the facebook group has like evolved over time in terms of how much people can post and things like that but it's been beautiful to see that amount of people come together and yeah. for the most part it working really well and in harmony like there hasn't been a lot of like bickering and things like that on the at least mm-hmm. on the front end from what I can see like I think it's just been really really inspiring and really cool to see all of these people come together and support each other from so many different backgrounds so it's amazing yeah it's been it's been really cool it's always fun to see people that like we're never friends before. And then they join the masterclass and they like talk back and forth to different people. And then like, you see them like tagging each other and posts on me. It's like, I'm like, Oh, you guys made friends. That's so cool. That's so cool. I love it. And yeah, the, the people that have like found me through your world as well, like loveliest humans, like such yeah. like kind hearted people. And it's just, yeah, it's beautiful to see all of the pieces connect together for them through all of these different opportunities and also through the collaborations that you're supporting inside the masterclass, like people from my world come into your world, people from yeah. like there's all different crossover um, mm-hmm. and it's cool like to be able to work together. And do you want to touch on like how you view collaboration in terms of let's just focus on the equestrian industry and how you found collaborating with other people and how like your views on where people have this sort of competitiveness come out or this cattiness come out or like 
all of these things because I know that you've experienced really healthy collaboration and really great support from other professionals, but then you've also experienced the other side where people are not so supportive. Um, so do you want <laughs> yeah. to talk about that? Truly, yeah, totally. Um, so my take on collaboration is, is, and again, like it's like this in every industry, it's not just horses, but yeah, we're all working with the same body and we're all working with the same species. And at some point there is going to be crossover and there should be. Um, along with that though, just like in anything with life, you know, our our lifetime of experience, our lens, not just in horses, but in, you know, in in our human relationships and our trauma, in our childhood, you know, in our past lives, whatever you want to say, all of these lenses come together to see the, how we're viewing the body. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it's really, really valuable to collaborate because we all come from different things, right? And I do, I'm one of those people, like I genuinely believe that we all inside of us have like a specific gift that we're really good at. We all have a specific energy. Mm-hmm. So here's a really good example. Um, when I was in body work school, we had like the, we were in the advanced class and um, a mentor of mine was in the advanced class with me and we were, we were just kind of messing around and she had like, I don't know. 30 years of experience on me, incredible body worker. And there was a horse that she was working on who, for whatever reason, because of the different energy that maybe she had or how it related to the trauma that was being held in his body, what for whatever reason, he would not let go of the spot that he was work that she was working on, wouldn't do it. I worked on him for like not even five seconds and he melted into putty and let it go. And the same thing happened in reverse with a mare earlier in the day with us, right? Like I was working with the mare and I was like, yeah, she's not, she's just not in a space that she can let it go. She walked in there and the mare was like, oh, you can have all of my problems. And it was so cool. And we had like a big conversation about it because other people had experienced different things. Um, And it was really cool to me because I'm just a nerd about energy and bodies and stuff like that. But it's like, there are 5 billion different techniques in the world, but sometimes it's completely dependent on your energy and what you bring to the table, which is, you know, again, like when you talk about how layered the masterclass is, like, it's not just exercises. It can't yeah. be like, there's so much that goes into things. So the, all that being said, I really very much believe in collaboration because it's like, I have my lens. I've worked very hard to like design what I've got. And I obviously believe in it and it very obviously works. And yeah there's so many other layers to it like you know like the way that you teach it was really Mm -hmm. cool like oh Shaylee comes in and she talks about with the animal communication and the way that she can communicate what the animals are seeing and offering that as insight the way that Amber teaches breath work to help that you know Catherine comes in and she teaches the same thing with the horses but she teaches the rider biomechanics so she can get the riders to get the horses to do things in ways that like I couldn't do it Tara can bring up the energy of the plane I mean it's just like there's so many different things yeah it's so cool um And so, I mean, I don't know, like I just view collaboration as one giant party and, you know, not to say that it's all women because there are men in the field. I primarily, Mm. I'm mainly around women. Um, And so it's really like also about like just kind of fixing each other's crowns and being like, hey, like that's really cool what you're doing. And Mm. we can all be so successful. Mm. There's no, like I, I was homeschooled and I was raised in Hawaii. And so I didn't, I never, I didn't go to public school. So I don't really, I genuinely in my brain, like don't understand clicks and how Mm. like the, that judginess, it doesn't, I just wasn't around it. So I didn't understand it until I was an adult. And then I was like, that's really fascinating that you think that. Um, But yeah, on the flip side of things, you know, there's really well-known body workers that just absolutely cannot stand me. I trigger the hell out of them. And I don't know what it is about me that triggers them. Um, Don't want to work together. They'll like, for those that don't know, I have a traumatic brain injury. Um, my ex slammed my head into a concrete wall and I almost died. It was a whole thing. I had to, I was a public speaker at the time in my grown up job. I had to um, do physical therapy to work through a stutter. I still struggle with it sometimes. Um, but one of the disabilities that have come with that is my, my memory sucks. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I have a lot of anxiety, I'll totally strip words in a mix match. And I did one podcast where I like, the whole time, my own work, mind you, this is my work. The yeah. whole pod, I said the wrong thing muscle the whole time. And I was like, just, I don't know. And I was like, I should have, I, we need to go back and address it. And I did, but, and that turned into a hate group of people. It was like, did you hear, she said this and blah, blah, blah. And she's such an idiot. And I were like, had hate mail. And there were like all of these people trashing stuff. I'm like, at what point would it have been better? Even, even if 
even mm -hmm. if it was intentional that I said something wrong, do you not think it would have like for me, if that had happened and I was like, I would have messaged the poor girl and I would have been like, did you know that you said that? Like, yeah. cause you've never said that before. And then you said that, you know, and it just, it would never occur to me to just throw like slander and hate speech around somebody, you know, or a lot of the stuff that I have learned, um, it's been self-taught, right? Like this is all me, like going to the horse and being like, okay, so this works. Why does this work? And then taking it back to textbooks. And I, I mean, I ask vets and I ask PT and I ask other people, but nobody else has had the answer, which is why we have what we have, but it's been a lot of self-taught and there have been times where I thought that it was something and it wasn't and like, maybe the words are different. And even still like people don't, mm. they don't elaborate and be like, Hey, this really cool thing that you're doing. Actually, this is why it works. Not this. Like yeah. I would be so receptive to that. I think that that's really cool. Um, and there is an energy of, and again, it's like this in every industry, but there's just an energy of they get triggered and they think that for some reason they will get more success if they slam other people. And it's very odd. Um, it's yeah, it's very odd, especially when there's groups of us that like we all work together all the time. Cause I'm like, you know, that like, this is a really cool club, right? Like, yeah, I know. And maybe that's the other thing of them. Yeah. It, it's really interesting. And it would be super interesting to kind of like peel back the layers for each, each of these individual people. And I've done so much like, one on so many one-on-one -on -one sessions with people where we really peel back the layers and look at like okay well where did this belief come from or where did this emotion come from and oh yeah so, like everyone's <laughs> got so much stuff that they carry that they don't even realize they carry especially if they're like projecting all of these things outwardly mm -hmm. and it's just that there's so much wounding there that's being blocked and it's just like projected outwards to try and like protect them and keep them safe right from things that have happened in the past, but it's just like, it's putting a huge wall up for opportunity. And it, I think it's just interesting, especially in the online space as well, or like if you're working with people and you're not like in person, it's like people almost don't know how to have a healthy conversation and like yeah. do that via a message or via like, or how to reach out to someone if they're like, at the end of the day, we're all just people. And I remember having this experience when I went overseas um and I work I put like the guy that I worked for on a bit of a pedestal at that time I was like mm. oh my goodness like he's this trainer he's been on all these viral videos all the things and then like working for him I was like he's just a person he's just a person and I think mm -hmm. we forget that people are just people and I think people forget that there's someone on the other side of writing a post or showing up on a podcast or showing up for a master class that at some point has been fucking terrified, <laughs> like so, terrified. so scared about sharing their voice and sharing what they want to put out there. And it's just like, here's, here it is for the world to kind of like view. And you're sitting on the other end going like, I hope people like it. Like, it's almost just like whenever I put I out an offering, it feels like sometimes I'm a little kid going, here's this artwork I drew. Like, do you yeah, want to look like it's amazing? Exactly. Do you want to look at it? And then like, if you like, nobody responds you're like oh my god or like you get you know what I mean it's such a vulnerable place to be it's such a vulnerable place to be and like and this is something I really like you're gonna be able to attest to this I think better than some other people so there are two different types of people I'm sure there is more than that but there are two different types of people that I'm going to speak to right now um on on the sharing platform especially like in, in our world like in the horse world right there are the people that are very, um, they're just sharing everything that they read in a book and they're sharing everything that they learned in a class and they're sharing everything that they learned from their trainer and their trainer and their trainer. And so they're just, I don't want to say regurgitating information, yeah. but it really, they're regurgitating information and totally it like, it has a different energy. It's going to land with different people, a yeah. better way than that person. Like I'm not discounting that at all. Mm. And it's still regurgitated information. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I'm bringing to the table is not regurgitated information. It's stuff that I've literally spent absolute painstakingly blood, sweat, and tears, agony. I've lost horses. I've taken every lesson along the way. Like everything that I'm teaching, while some of it, sure, you know, I've had people that have my, how I've been trained has allowed me the lens to see and to ask the horses. Like I've been trained to be this way. So I, I agree with that. 
Yeah. But the things that I have found out were 100% because I sat with my horses and was like, how do we do this? How do we do this? And I just fucked around and found out. And then I took all of the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours that it has taken me to take that back to textbooks and back to these things to be like, okay, but like, but why though? Yeah. What is going And so everything that I'm sharing is really actually genuinely just my work. Mm. And that's terrifying. That's not regurgitating. When you're creating an offering and you're going through all of these things that you're doing and you're putting this, like, we're literally taking slabs of our heart and our soul yep. and our entire, like, all of this work that we put in where we've been like, here world, like, fuck, you know? And so when it yep. gets trashed, it hurts so much more because the people that can, like, you can trash it. Somebody says they literally go, well, the textbook said this. So, you know, I can't be wrong. It's not me. They can hide behind that. I can't hide behind that. No, I- you know, I, I have no armor. It's just, here you go. And I'm a Pisces. So I'm just like super emotional. About it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it's a lot. And to like unravel the process, like, that in itself, like, I think takes your ex- level of expertise to the next level. Like when you're doing something and you kind of are feeling your way through it, but then to actually take that and put it into something that mm-hmm. you're using to teach other people how to do that thing. And then going through the journey, because the first iteration of it's not perfect. You need no. to learn how to teach people the information. It's never going to be perfect. So like, yeah. And it, it's just like that whole process, like, and even for me, like, I remember when um, your masterclass came out, like, I almost was like, fuck, oh, now I have to change my whole program. Like, I've got to shift things. I've got to tweak things. I've got to add in these new pieces. And for me, like, I'm in a continual process of coaching people, learning shit on the back end. Yep. And then teaching them in real time and yep. trying to figure out how to do all of that preach and it's like holy shit dude like people have no idea how much work goes into the back end I that webinar that I just did with Yogi I taught I, I like I was doing they're all my slides right like they're all things that like I've worked with they're my horses it's like stuff I've talked about I must have spent 80 hours the weeks leading up like the three weeks leading up to it making sure that what I was going to say was right and I did myself a favor and I like wrote out all these things and then I I rewrote it multiple times. I sent them to Catherine to like edit, to help me because I was like, I need, yeah. I need this to go really well, which means I need to set myself up for my disability, which means I need to put up a slide in words that I can read in real time. So that I'm very, very careful. So much work, dude. So much work. <laughs> and people, so don't, work. people just like, like, oh yeah, they're just showing up for free or for whatever, for whatever. And you're just like, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> if I actually got that, paid for all the back end stuff that I did, I oh have good. if I think <laughs> about like I don't know from your end, but if I think about the thousands and thousands of dollars I've spent on courses, healing, mindset work, like everything yeah. is like, and then yeah, it, it's just crazy. It's crazy, and I don't think people ever can fathom it until you you're doing it. Mm-mm. No. And it, you know, and it takes so much faith in yourself and faith in your work and just that, um, oh my, I wish I could remember the the thing Amy Skinner shared one. I was like, I'm going to steal that and use it so much, but she shared a meme today and it was something like, you have to have the tenacity of a cockroach that's been like smashed six times and like just refuses to die. And I was like, but really though, like that's what it feels like so many times to just be like, no, I'm just, I'm just going to keep showing up and I'm yeah. going to keep showing up and, you know, and I have, I love mentoring people and I've had a couple of people that I've mentored along the way, not, not apprentice trainers, but just other, like some body workers and some people yeah. that are like starting out in their businesses. And they're like, how do you, how did you get to where you are? And I was like, I keep showing up yep. and I keep showing up. And, and that means that you show up when it sucks and when it hurts and it's like, Okay. So the night before the webinar that happened with Yogi, I found out that a good friend of mine was shot and murdered by her husband. Oh my God. And I had to turn and like, and that I I had no time to process it. I had no time to think about it. I had to sleep. I had to, again, because I have a head injury, like I can't have a whole bunch of stress and anxiety. And I just still had to show up and like, and show up. Right. Like there are so, and like, could I have canceled it? Sure. But Mm. There were thousands of people that were interested in that. And I'm not going to like turn this person down and I'm not going to, you know, like 
I just don't do that. You know, I canceled a clinic the week that I had to put tracking down because I was kind of myself and yeah. my father-in-law also had a stroke and had to move in with us for a little while. And so like, there's people have no, also, I had a baby this year. Like, yes, so you had a freaking baby and you've like skyrocketed your business, like, and are like right. handling thousands more people from all around the world than you were before. Yes, truly. And so, and you know, and but people don't realize like all the back end stuff. And it's right. like, I don't have, and you know, maybe this comes from like my past, but like, I mean, like, you know, this, but like, you know, I, my ex-husband left when I just had a, a, a newborn and a toddler and I was super broke and we were on state assistance and I had to sell my horses, and my wedding ring. And like, I've, I've been rock bottom before. And so, yeah. you know, when you're, yeah. when you're at that rock bottom, you don't, well, I mean, I guess some people do. I've never found that I had a option to give up because I had two little kids that I had to feed, right? Like I had to keep showing up for them. And so that tenacity, like that just ability to be like, well, this really fucking sucks, but I guess I'm going to work today because if I don't go to work today, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that doesn't mean that I don't honor self-care and that I don't do yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. They're, I get it. They're I get it. For it. You know, you like you show up and then you take a break and you show up and take a break. And that, but, but that's what sets the people apart that are successful that are not right. So yeah. when these sweet little girls that are fresh out of massage school, or, you know, they're like a year out and they're messaging me and they're like, oh, it's just really hard. Like, you know, I really just want to charge what you charge. And I'm like, bitch, you just graduated. Like, <laughs> You know, I'm not trying to be rude, but like you, I, I charge $50 a person for years. I only charged 50 bucks and I traveled everywhere, dude. I threw my massage table in my car and I drove for hours. I barely made any money, but what I did was I got a lot of experience with my hours mm -hmm. and I got a lot of like making a name for myself. And again, all of that was experimenting, right? Like I'm going to work really? on horses and humans and I'm going to figure out these questions, which is why I quit my training business. Every single body was a question. Mm -hmm. And so like, it takes so much work and so much problem solving and but then people see you be successful and they're like, Oh, it just must be nice. Oh uh, yeah. It just must be easy. And it's just like, you had to get like, what did one mentor said? They were just like, when people pay you, it's like, you're putting their trust in your pocket. Right. You know what I mean? You have to develop the trust. Do you have to, that doesn't just happen overnight. Like that's why people can put offers out there and it's crickets. You know what I mean? Even me, I'll put a new offer out now that people aren't aware of and I will get not much response at this point in time. I'm sure there'll be a point in the future where I'll put anything out and people will buy because they love it and <laughs> all of the things, you know, but it's like people are still, there's a journey. It's not just like a ding overnight, ta-da. Like it might look yeah. like that on the outside, but when you actually hear people's backstories and like, for those, for anyone who's like wondering about backstories, do yourself a favor, listen to the Tim Ferriss podcast, listen to the diary of a CEO, listen to all of the famous people's stories. Like I listened to one where it was Mel B from the Spice Girls and like, oh my God, like went from like being quite poor growing up to like within five years famous and like mm -hmm. all the stuff that comes along with that. And it's just like people are glorifying certain things and it, it's just so fascinating because they're putting, it's just like they're, they're creating the separation and the distance, which is like not helping anyone. No. Yeah. It's not anyone. And I, you know, and again, that kind of probably ties back to people that have more of like that competitive thing. And it's like, they don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I had an instance thing. with the competition, the competitiveness, because um, something came up where someone was triggered by me but it was because they were trying to do something similar and it wasn't working as easily as it felt like it, they were thinking it was for me. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, they were thinking it was for you. Like that's the key sentence there. There, Like it's not easy. I don't no. know any, I don't know anybody that's really successful that it has been easy for them. Like they might get to a place that it is easier and yeah. fucking good on them. You know, yeah, like, and I think it's different as well, especially when you love what you do. It feels easier, but it doesn't mean that you're not working hard. No, it doesn't mean that. And it's like, I don't know, it there's there's so much. But the other thing that I have for like a mindset stuff is because, you know, whether or not it's because of the amount of like grief that I've had in my life, the amount of loss or, you know, how many times I've reinvented myself because of, yeah. you know, different things that have had to had to happen like all of this could burn to the ground and I wouldn't bat an eyelash at it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like, I don't actually care. And I, I think that really fucks with people. Yeah. Um, I really genuinely believe in it and I love in it. And, and I love that like my trainers are going out and they're able to have a good living. And I love, I love all of the horses. I mean, every single day I wake up to these beautiful, sweet stories of like people like, oh my God, like I was gonna put my horse down and now I don't have to, or like, I thought this huge behavior thing was, you know, but, but it's really me. And I did this breath work with Amber and now it's great. Like just all this really cool stuff. Right. I had so many messages from you in your course. And like, it's so beautiful to me to see that. And it could go away tomorrow and I would be fine. Yeah. Like yeah. the world has ended for me many times and I've unfortunately woken back up the next day. <laughs> like it's, also like being in that fine. energy where you don't need it is where everything comes to you. Truly. That's I mean, what, that's, that's what it trips people up because they're like, I feel mm-hmm. like I need this thing to happen right away. And I do this to myself as well. Like, I'll be like, I want my damn property. Like I want my I want my beautiful property. I can see where I can imagine it. I could picture it. I'm going to host these like epic retreats there. Like it's going to be a thing. It's going to be epic. And it sometimes is. I'll get in the mode of being like trying to force it to come together and trying to like yeah. copy what other people are doing and like shift business models and try to like, and I'm like, Felicity, no, like the neat, it's like when you, you're dating and you're like trying to meet someone, like whenever you're like, please message me back. I know. <laughs> They're like, no. And the moment you're like, I'm just going to live my life and just do me and take the next step and like follow the next step in front of me. Then they're like, hey, here I am. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No, I have, um, I have two golden rules that I really live by around business and this stuff. So one is I have no idea what anybody. So first of all, and this is not me being cocky. This is me just being genuine, whether or not it's because I don't believe in competition or what, but like, I 100%, there's no part of me that views people as competition. Yeah. So I hired this girl to do marketing for me, this marketing branding thing, um, which is really kind of a wash because I do it all anyway. But she, (laughs) she like went through and did this survey and she was asking me questions and she's like, I need you to send me, you know, the top 10, I would ideally like 20 people, but at the very minimum, I need to have like the top 10 people that are your competition in the Uh industry. And I, I couldn't give her anything. Like I literally had nothing to give her. And she was like, there has to be somebody. And I was like, there's not though. (laughs) And I was like, nobody's doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like they might, they might think that they're doing what I'm doing, but I know that they're not doing what I'm doing. So she's like, okay, but like, okay, but then who are those girls? But they're not my competition though. Cause they're like, it's so different, like so different. And it, I don't know. It was just, it was really funny. And she just had like a kind of a mental come apart because she didn't understand what I was saying. And I was like, I just don't view people's competition. Yeah. And in that, I also don't have any idea what anybody else is offering. Mm. I don't know. And like, I don't there's... think you ever truly know until you've experienced it, like in entirety, it's not like even just you having <laughs> like, you only know me through the interactions that we've had and maybe like stories that my clients maybe have shared with you if they're totally. in your world as well but you haven't experienced working with me for three months. Mm-mm. Like you don't I know. No I have no idea. So no how, idea. Could I how could I say that you're my competition? Like that's, yeah, that's so interesting. interesting. I love that. A- I love that, um, that way of viewing it. And it, I was having a conversation with my students around this this morning, actually. And um, it was coming up and I was just trying to describe like when people are investing in anything, they're investing in the energy of that whole thing. It's not right. just the modality that's being taught because like you you are saying like you do body work. There's someone else that does body work, but it's completely different, you know, like right. world apart. And like there's so many different people out there doing similar things or labeling themselves in similar ways, but it's also different. And I think, yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. And I think as like, professionals it's just about realizing that and being like there's space for everyone there's and if so you do allow yourself to shine in your light then mm-hmm. the people that are like are for you will come and find you and it, if they go and find someone else as well that's similar that doesn't mean anything about you as a person that person nope. is just interested in working with more people like it's that's all it is um yeah it's it's really fascinating but I think it's um I think the layers underneath it, like so much conditioning and also like, I find it interesting. This just popped into my head. How do you think that there's like female professionals that are more comfortable promoting male professionals? 
Oh my God. Yes. Especially if the male has an accent. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, I really feel like it's the whole, like the witch wounding thing of being like, there can't be all these powerful people, women that come together and like support each other and like group together and like, oh my goodness. And it's just like, oh, but this man can. And it's like, what? And I'm like, like, that are big that are that have accents are bad at what they do I'm not saying that by the no, way no, 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 no. I find it really funny that women will take they will just like blindly like anything this male says again particularly if he has an accent and then I go back and I'm like that's really interesting because like I know four other women that are extremely talented that have told you the same thing and you've not listened to anything that any of them yeah. have said but this dude can walk in but it is I mean it's and it's, and it's like that in every industry, right? Like it's not, this is not the horse thing. It's just, it's a very, in, it's an interesting thing that happens there. Um, it's an interesting. And part. they also like people that are mean to them. Yeah. Um, which I think is really interesting. I, I went to a barn. I was teaching at a barn. It was like six months ago. And we were on one end of the arena. And then on the other end of the arena, this lady was getting a lesson, a dressage lesson. And this woman was berating her so bad yep so bad dude like I like I couldn't I could I could not like I I was like I wanted so badly to be like what the fuck is wrong with you like why are you talking to her like that and it was the most horrifically abusive like that I would and this woman was writing and she was nodding and she was agreeing with her and she was like yes yes you're right you know like I'm basically just a pile of shit and she's I mean it was it was the most horrific thing I've ever experienced in, in the horse world. Yeah. Like if that it's were really like, uncommon. I no, it's not. And I just, you know, but I, and I hear these horror stories all the time. I'm just not usually around it, but to sit there and be in it. And then she gets done and she pats the horse and the trainer was like, so what did we learn from this? And she was like, you know, you're just absolutely right. And I just, I just can't thank you. You know, thank you so much for holding me to the standard. And she just, she thought that she, and I'm like, this woman is being fucking traumatized. The horse was being traumatized. She was, you know, cause of the, how she was teaching, yeah. she was also horrible to the horse. And I'm like, I shouldn't probably go out in public. <laughs> like, I, it's, it's crazy because like, I used to also, because I was taught as well, like there was this one guy I used to have lessons with when I was competing and he like had amazing amounts of knowledge and things like that. But in the beginning, especially if he had people with him, he would shut you fucking down and be like, I saw you warming up out there. Like everything was wrong. I remember once he was like, stop talking, jab a mouth. Like he was like all of these like things. Right. And then the next day, at the end, he would rave about how much progress you'd made and all the, like, it was really toxic. And it's like, so many people would be like, this guy's amazing. He's incredible that you just have to go to him, blah, blah, blah. So there's so many things. And even um, with my horse, Bruce, who you, you've helped me a bit with, like when I bought him for full transparency, I paid $8,000 for him off of the track because my trainer at the time told me he was going to be a world beater. He told me, oh, his paddle, like, that'll calm down. That'll straighten out as he gets stronger. And, like, everything will, like, he's going to be a world beater, all the things. Every lesson would tell me, oh, you're going to win at Royal Shows. You're going to do all the things. And this is coming from someone who is a very prominent, like, person. And I believed it all. And it was really interesting because um, this year I, some, I, I, connected with someone and they were like oh I'm going to go to this business course right and um I was like oh cool like told me about it she was like oh yeah I've heard a bit about these people they're incredible it's interstate and I was like fuck it and I bought a ticket and I went right oh my god it was the most like soul-sucking thing I have been to because it was so old school to the point where I was sharing and hopefully this will make sense as I'm sharing the story but I they did this hot seat coaching thing And I was sharing about my business and I was like, it's incredible. I want to grow. I want to help more people. Like, how do I do this? And she was just like, you're leaving money on the table. Like, you do not value your intellectual property. You should be charging this amount, this amount, this amount, like completely just shut down everything that I was trying to say. Like there were people who were sharing about their businesses and crying at some points. And she's like, you just need to put your big girl pants on. Like, why are you crying? It was fucked. Like the whole thing was so like toxic and fucked. And um, it just reminded me of like these experiences in the horse world and like how we yeah. so easily 
get like sucked into this. And even I saw a post from a business coach the other day talking about how she nearly like hired a coach because, um, but it was like she would nearly hire them because she felt so shameful about herself that she felt like she needed fixing. Do you know what I mean? Through the through the person's yeah. like marketing and how they were teaching, and I'm like, oh my goodness, exactly. like like fear based marketing, right? Fear based like, marketing and just like making mm-hmm. you feel like a piece of shit so you come back. Um, yep. I actually had somebody tell me, and she was really like, and, and and I still I still work with her in her horse, but she said, I feel like you're almost too kind because I'm very kind and I'm, and I'm very like, I hold space for people. And, you know, one of the kickbacks that I've gotten is I will, I'm not a purist per se. I am for me and I am for my train, you know, like I, like I, when I'm giving a lesson and I'm training, like I, I have a very certain standard that I try to hold and I don't believe in um, shaming people if they're not like all the way. Right. So there's like this belief yeah. system. So for those that like, aren't super familiar with my work, we start very gently in hand and we do a lot of in hand work and we work on slowly, we, we work on actually activating specific muscles within the horse. So instead of saying, I want my horse to do a leg yield or shoulder in, we say, I want them to activate their infraspinatus and their supraspinatus. And so we're going to turn off the brachius phallicus and this is how we're going to do it. And like, it's a very in detail, right. Takes time. The idea is, is that we work through stuff in hand until the horse gets developed enough that then they are strong enough to carry the rider. And then we teach the rider how to do the same thing so that we know that the horses are using the proper riding muscles while you're working, right? This is how we keep them functionally sound. Um, There's a lot of people that will just absolutely hate on people that don't choose to stop riding their horses throughout this process. And I don't right like that's their journey that's their horse's journey like if that's where they want to go that's fine obviously if you get on a zoom call with me and your horse is fucking three-legged I'm gonna not support that right but if that's what you want to do or if you don't want to stop showing like there's a lot of people that like they're still actively showing are their horses perfectly developed all through the pillars are they wonderful and awesome absolutely not is their center of gravity up in their pole a little bit while they're going do they dip behind the vertical every once in a while because they're off balance totally and I still support them because God damn it, they're trying, right? Like yes. they're still. Trying. And so one of the big kickbacks that I get is I'm not a purist and I'm not like, I don't fall into this category. And so she's like, you're just a little bit too nice. Like you just need to be a little bit more cutthroat about stuff. And I was like, I won't do that. No, and for, for what that you're are. doing, that's not supportive for anything that you teach, because if you're more cutthroat, like you're not <laughs> teaching people how to come to their own conclusions and how to develop their fear and how to trust themselves to figure it out for themselves. And yeah, I completely agree. And I, everyone's on their own journey. Like even for me, like when Ooh. I first learned about like horsemanship and like had my eyes open to that, it took me months to actually explore it yep. because I was like too hard basket. Don't want to stop riding. Don't want to stop competing. And I think people forget about like, of course, we want to help your horse. But at the same time, if you're riding a horse and you're starting to acknowledge that there's some things that aren't quite okay, you have to go through potentially a heap of guilt that you feel about putting your horse in that situation. You have to go through, what do I do with my life now? What is my identity? What are other people going to think? Like, it's not just like fix your horse and like go on with your life and everything's happy. Like there's too many layers. So many layers. And it's not even ever just about that horse, but it's like, like people don't believe me when I say I had like a four year meltdown because I then had to melt down about like all of the other horses that I screwed up all of the fucking people that I taught how every single trophy that I owned was really at the expense of a horse. I like burned and threw away a bunch of my shit. Like who does that? But I did because I had a mental breakdown because I was like (laughs) all of this, that horse did this and that horse did that. And I'm like pulling the trophies out and I'm just super upset. And it's like, do I think everybody should beat themselves up like that? Absolutely not. Please don't do that. That was a, you know, again, Pisces, but, <laughs> but I, I had, to go on process, yeah. I had to go through all of that. And it took me years to even be able to speak to it because then teaching about it and, oh God, one of the hate mails that I got, this is one of my personal favorites. Cause I get, you know, so many, one of them, she was like, well, I was initially put off by her because she openly talks about in her post, how she used to use, you know, all of these like 
negative, all of this terrible ways of horsemanship and people don't really change that much. So I know that that's, you know, she's just a fake or like some bullshit like that. I'm like, God forbid, I admit that I, <laughs> okay. All oh my right. God. Cause we're just like, that's just such a bizarre, like. I've just always been a tree hugging hippie that had just perfect, perfect mindful horsemanship at the forefront. Perfect. I still fuck up. There's oh. still time where I'm working with horses and I'm like, God, that old trainer lens comes on and I'm like, you know, I'm not sure how much of your autonomy that I'm willing to honor today. And then I have to sit there and decide, am I really going to do this? And if I'm not in a place that I can actually do it, I sit my ass down and I go home and I put the horse away and I'm like, I can't show up for you. Cause clearly if I'm struggling with it that much, I've got other shit going on. It's usually yeah. because I'm in pain. So like I have a lot of nerve pain too. And so if my pain scale is too high, I don't register that I'm in pain because I deal with it all the time. So all that I register is that my capacity is lower. Mm -hmm. And so my ability to honor your autonomy, not as much, not as good today. As but it it's so been. interesting how like through all of this work, it's about honoring the horse's experience, but it's just like, in order to truly do that, you have to honor your own. So much. It's like, so much. So, so it's much. just, <laughs> but it's not really about the horse. I mean, like it's about the horse, but like, it's not really about the horse. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree and um like the horses are just bringing people to us to help the human <laughs> like, let's be honest like that's what they're doing and they're like they have a greater mission in all of this like they're they're the ones yeah which again is why we collaborate right because yes. like like we talked about, like I was a life coach for a while. I will totally like, there's not a time that I give a lesson where I'm not touching on a little bit of like life coachy stuff. And then I usually follow it up with, you should go talk to Felicity and Amber. <laughs> 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 you should go do some breath work. You should go do these things. Like yeah. you need, need that other support because yeah. it can't, I can't do all of that. I have chosen yeah. my lane. I dabble in all of it because I think that it's helpful to show up for them. But my lane that I've chosen it for is that I really genuinely like to work on developing the horse's bodies and how to help people totally. really understand what that is. Mm. And so then I can then send that over to other people. And there isn't anybody else that does my work, like actually. Yeah. So it's really easy for me because I can be like, here's what I like to work on. And here are all of these other amazing, really cool people. You want to learn more about how to work on your own horse and body work? Go to this person. If you want to, you know, mm. find out how to hold space for them, go to this person. You want to learn how to be a writer, go to that person. Like so many cool things. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, especially when you're like the main person in your business, like there's only one of you, like only one of you know, me. there's only one. And I find it really interesting yeah, I think it's cool that you've got like people working underneath you now. And I, I find it interesting. And I think a lot of people that like think about training other people to do what they do is like, oh my goodness, like what's going to happen? Like, like how is that all going to work in terms of like, in like, or well, this could just be my train of thought sometimes of being like, like our city mindset. Like I'm going to work myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job. But for me, like I, I um was following someone recently and they were like talking about their coach and I'm like, they talk about their coach. In reality, I should want to work with their coach, but I don't because I prefer this person's energy. Do you know right. what I mean? Or like with, with your instance, like uh, so many times people have other people that do very great work, similar work underneath them, but it's like, no, no, I don't want to work with them. I want to work with you. <laughs> like, it's just, I don't know where I'm going with that part of conversation, but yeah, it's just interesting. All the layers. I totally understand what you're saying. And yeah. that is an I've had that where people are like, I just can't believe that you're willing to like hand this out. And I'm like, well, there's only one of me. And, you know, despite some people's opinions, all I actually care about are the horses. And if I can't go in clinic all around and do all of these things all of the time, I can't reach those people. I can't reach those horses. Yeah. I can't help them. But if I can train other people to go and do that, then like, go do it. Right. Like they're yeah. still not going to be me. like they're, they're apprenticing with me, but they haven't so here's the deal with, especially when you're doing your own work, mm. there isn't a single person. It doesn't matter how much I train them. There will never be anybody, any apprentice trainer, anybody that I've worked with that will be able to do my work as good as I can do it. Yeah. And the reason for that is because I am the one that reverse engineered this entire thing. I'm the one that found it. I'm the one that had that got the moments from the horses. Like I'm the, like, I understand it so intrinsically. It's so it's so in my soul and a part of my being 
Mm. And I can speak to it for hours and hours and days and days and days and in and, and, and every in every different capacity. Like I don't, there's not a blip in my being that is not this work. Mm. So I don't worry about that because you can't get that. Like the things that I've learned from other people, I can only quote so much, right? I can understand it, but I won't understand what it took for that person to go through to get to that conclusion. No. To, to be able you can't to ever embody that. someone else's experience. No, I can't. And so mm. because it's my own, I don't, I really don't worry about it. Like I feel nothing about it. And I feel like I'll be mentoring these people, you know, forever just to be able to help them find the language and find the things. And they'll get their own conclusions and they're all amazing trainers in their own right. And they're bringing their lens to it. Like it's not discounting what they're doing. Totally. It's, it's just, just adding I, to mm. Right. I just don't, I feel like I'm just adding like a little bit of a tool set into their box, but like, it's never going to be me. No. no. Um, yeah. So I don't find it threatening at all. If anything, I just think it's really, really rad that there's more people and more help so that I can kind of, like I had a call with all of them last night and I'm like, it's cool for me because I've closed my books down quite a lot so that they can just kind of take over. And so at this stage where I'm at is I'm finishing up developing some online courses and then, um, and getting back to writing my book. Cause I was like doing a really good job. And then my baby was born and I had like this delusion of grandeur that I was going to finish it while I was on maternity leave. That didn't happen. Um, <laughs> so I'm going back to finishing it. But aside from that, my only real client clients are going to be my apprentice trainers. And I'm like, you guys, like I'm in a place now, like I really just want to show up and develop you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when I feel like doing a clinic, I can just pop in and do a clinic. Like anybody would be super stoked to have me show up to something or what I am probably going to do is I'm going to go and do like a little nerve release clinic on a tail end of one of their clinics. So I can just hang out and support them at theirs. Like I want to travel around and just, you know, be a little birdie and be super excited and proud of my team that's out there killing it, you know? I love that. Yeah. And it, it just, yeah, it, it makes so much sense. And then you can kind of spread your work, um, but then everyone puts their own flavor onto it because everyone's going to interpret things differently. Like even this course that I just finished, um, it's cool to see like everyone in the course, like we're all certified in the same thing, but we all and are doing it differently. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Totally. So and it's fun too because a lot of the people that I have, they're all, they do um, different disciplines on top of it, right? Like we have barrel racer, we've got classical dressage, we've got biomechanics, yeah. we've got, you know, all kinds of different stuff. And so those people are like, I'm not going to send necessarily my classical dressage trainer to a bunch of barrel racers. No. They're not going to, they're not going to listen. They're going to feel like it's like above their head or they're, you know, not in alignment but I can send the barrel racer to it and they can, it, they're teaching the same thing, but the language is so different and the vibe is so different and they can get on and run a pattern. So they have that respect. And like, it's just being smart. Yeah. In business, yeah. Really. So. Totally. Totally. Okay, cool. So I guess we're, we've been chatting for about an hour and I guess I'm trying to kind of draw some conclusions from this episode, which is really like, I think it's been very like, cool to hear your thoughts especially coming from the perspective where you didn't ever view that you had competition um I think that's really cool because for me like I would view other people as my competitors in terms of like in the past because of my own wounding around like um like what's happened in the past like other people like I've had childhood experiences where there would be I remember there was one instance where me and my best friend we were like five and there was this boy that we both liked and he picked her. Do you know what I mean? Like all of these yeah. different layers where like you're not chosen, you're not like those mm-hmm. things like unravel. And then you get to the point where, and even for me, I, I felt this like twinge come up with my business about like putting it out more. Cause I'm like, this is my baby. Like, this is the thing that's working for me. Like, what if it got like taken away or what, like, do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's all the layers that oh. I've had to go through. Um, well, and, yeah. I yeah. mean, I deal with, I've had, I have one person that this happens all the time that I'm sure is like way under my radar. But like, for instance, somebody took the masterclass, never had a one-on-one with me, didn't come to a clinic. We've never even had a conversation. They just, they cruise the masterclass, which I still only give out like the found, like there's a lot of information there, but it's still just like the foundational exercises. It's not even like anything above that. And Betsy actually caught it. Betsy Vonda, who's like one of my, my trainers and she caught it and she messaged the girl. She's like, you need to take that shit down before Celeste wakes up. Like, what the hell are you doing? And this person had 
had written a post and she was offering a bounce or movement method clinic on my pillars and on my things. And this whole, like the same, like fucking copy paste verbiage. Right. And I didn't, what, who, like, who does that? And I, you know, I sent her one message and I was like, you can't, and she had taken, she had, she had edited by the time I saw it, but I still saw it, but I still felt like messaging her because, you know, Betsy sent, sent me screenshots and I sent her a message and I was like, look, like we can't do that. And I've had other people that are in the master class that like, they'll take like, and they'll say like word for word, I'm doing this thing that is pillar one, but I'm calling it something different. And then they are like, we'll do a big post about this thing that they're doing that they thought that they created. And I'm like, fuck you. And, and it sounds really shitty. And this is, <laughs> people are like, oh, so this is edgy. <laughs> but it's not, like, I would never do that to somebody's work. Mm-hmm. Like, I would never, I would never take something that you created or some course that you did and then put a different name on it and then be like, oh, well, it's this thing that I've been working on for like a really long time. It's just like, you just kind of helped fill in a piece for me. Like, I would, it would never cross my mind to be disrespectful like that. Yeah. And so when people do that, it's really wild. And then, you know, the kickback is like, well, you know, we're all, we're all learning for the horses and we're, we should all just be trading things for free. And I'm like, no, we shouldn't though. Yeah. Like we're all working for a living and we're all trying to do things. And if you take one thing out of context, mm-hmm. this is actually, this is actually what pisses me off about it is that, and, and again, it's probably because it's my own work, but like, I understand how profound all of this stuff is and all of the little idiosyncrasies. So when people take like one thing mm-hmm. or they get like a glimpse of it and then they try to, you know, steal it for themselves and like go and do it because they see that I'm really successful. So they're going to do it too. Mm-hmm. They don't understand all of these other implications that come with it. Like they don't get it. And I'm just like, God, what? I so- know. I get it. And it's, so it's hard. So then there's one, you know, you've got the side that's like, I want to share this to the world. And then you have the other side that you're like, but I don't want it stolen and bastardized. And everybody deals with that. Again, this is not just the horse industry. This is like literally every industry. I mean, look at like Prada will come out with something on the runway and and then Ross has something similar. Yeah. Right. Totally. And it's okay, cool. Well, I'm Prada and you're Ross. (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. and I can't remember if it I think it was before we hit record but we were talking about the like initiation process of like Mm -hmm. growing your business and like becoming someone that is a prominent figure in whatever industry or whatever field and like it's almost just like um through this this like um money mindset course I did they would talk about like there were people celebrating like getting refunds or getting people say like, yes. can I have a refund? They're like, yes, it's part of the initiation process yes. of like, we're making it. And then it's like, so people asking for refunds, people like not being happy with your servers, people sending yeah. you hate mail, like, yeah. Well, and obviously there's a lot of like good shimmied in there as well, but it's just like, there's really? these layers that you have to go through. That seems like yeah. everyone has to go through in order everybody. to reach a certain level. Everybody has to go through it. Yeah, and it's copied like, oh. And it, and it's so hard. And like, and when I make comments, like I'm proud of your Ross, like I'm not being, no, it's that, and it's the same thing, vice versa, right? Like I would just be the Ross to your product, right? Like if I were to do it and it's just the thing that really pisses me off (laughs) more than anything about it too, on top of like the stuff that I already mentioned is that because I've worked with so many people. I genuinely like 100% with all of my insights and all of my knowings, I genuinely believe that everybody has a really awesome special talent and something that they can offer the world. Like like in my soul of souls, I believe this. I agree. Yeah. And so I get really, and it's not, it sounds really funny. So Catherine, Catherine and I have had this conversation because I did this with her one time because people like assume that she's me because we teach different things. So they'll like, they kept putting Catherine in like the Celeste box. And she was doing it and she was showing up for it. And finally I had this like temper tantrum about it. And somebody interpreted my temper tantrum of me telling Kat, like being getting territorial over my work and not letting Catherine in. I was like, no, it's actually, I know that it sounds like I'm territorial over my shit. What I'm actually territorial around is the fact that she's a grand master at what she does. And you guys are not allowing her to do it because you keep putting her in my lane and it's not, she's, it's so beneath her. Like, teaching my shit is beneath her. 
not that my shit's not amazing, but it's not what she is. Right. And so Mm -hmm. like when people steal my work and then they try to like call it something else and name it and like try and teach things for themselves, I'm like, but you're so much better than that. Like you have really cool offerings that you can do and you're never going to tap into that. If you're, if you keep trying to steal and regurgitate other people's shit, like it won't. Yeah. And so and again, that's like probably like the old life coaching me kicking in, but I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop. So I'm really actually just more territorial over them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost just like when I see things like people like dimming their light or doing things that are a bit out of integrity or out of character, you're like, I almost feel sad for you because you're not like recognizing your own potential and like your own worth and like your own ability and yeah. giving yourself the permission to actually recognize and own that. Like, mm-hmm. like come on, like stand up it's, like you can, you can learn from other people and you and like I said like even with my yes. own stuff it comes from other people and you're you are learning from other people yeah and if you sit with that and you keep learning and, and, and maybe this is just my experience but like my ADHD only allows me to hyper focus on so many things right but like mm-hmm. there will always be something that inspires me that says this is what we're going to focus on yeah and so I t- all of these different lenses and all of these different tools and all these different things that all these different people have said and all these different books and courses and blah, 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 blah. And it's still just this one thing. And at some point I will sit with that long enough mm-hmm. where I'm not listening to anybody else. And I will just sit with it. Really. I just listen to the horse and then I get the answer and it's my answer that I found. And it has nothing to do with what I like. There isn't another text. There's nothing, no textbook, nothing else that I have found that says anything about what I teach mm-hmm. actually. Um, And that came from being able to sit in that, like, yeah, just honoring process. And it's not comfortable, dude. Like you feel like you're chasing your tail. You feel like you're never going to get there. You feel like, oh God, like, you know, who am I? Like, I'm never going to blah, 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 but it takes work. And that, you know, being the cockroach that just won't die. And, Mm -hmm. and then it happens. And so when these people are so hyper-focused on, well, I'm just going to take what you're teaching and I'm going to regurgitate. And like, all they do is do that. I, like, I, it's, I mean, it's not even, it is sad, but I'm just like, I just want to shake them. I would be like, you are <laughs> never going to find it. If you keep doing this, like yeah. everybody's so cool. Yeah. The universe that, so totally, totally. I feel you. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to find, find ways to kind of like, so basically it comes to the conclusion that there's no competitors because everyone is so unique and has their own spin yeah. on different things. Even if they're using a similar modality or even if there's someone who's certified in what you you work on like or a piece of that like they're all putting their own unique embodiment background lens on those things and like there's space for all of us there's so many horses out there in the world and especially if you work doing distance sessions as well like you all the world is your oyster like there's so many people that need help so So many many. yes so many And um, I guess to anyone that maybe listens to this and maybe is someone who feels like that they can't like stand up and like put their own like flair on things or put themselves out there. It's just about like, I guess, let this episode either trigger you or inspire you to like (laughs) recognize that like we see your power, (laughs) we see your potential. And it's just like, it's, it's your choice whether you choose to rise up and like claim that or whether you choose to keep being met these like uncomfortable lessons or being surrounded by people who just want to bring someone down, like it's your choice. And it takes a long time. Yeah. You know, my, my assistant's really sweet. She's, um, she's entered into the entrepreneur journey, um, on, on her, in her own business, in her own light. And then she also helps me when she can on the side, but she, um, she made some comments. She's like, yeah, man, you're killing it as a, like a, as a business analyst and it's entrepreneur. And I laughed and I said, you know, I have never not had a business, um, of my own since I was 15 years old. Mm-hmm. And so let me be clear that when I say that the fact that I've been doing this for 20 years, mm-hmm. if I'm not doing something well at this point in my <laughs> life, I've literally been doing something very wrong. Like it took 20 years for me to find the groove that I'm finding both in manifestation and confidence and tenacity, all those things. Like yeah. 20 years, dude, a long yeah. time. Yeah. I'm old. No, you're not. And <laughs> I mean, not. like, but can you imagine in another 20 years? Holy shit. It's gonna be so I fun. know. I always think about that. I'm like, oh my God, what does like 60 year old us look like? What oh, are they doing? Be- 
like it scares so, me a little bit. We're gonna, be, we're gonna be like hanging out at each other's huge facility. Yes. Just putting, <laughs> but um, like, yeah, so you cool. Touch on the like, just to wrap up. Do you want to touch on like a bit of your manifestation journey? Because I know that we like touched a bit on the energetic sort of throughout this, but you're also big on manifesting. And um, I can't, mm. I, I still, I'm getting the lines crossed between like what we spoke about before I hit record and what we spoke about in this. So there might be overlap, <laughs> who knows? Um, but do you want to touch on like how you've been very intentional about like all of these pieces unfolding? Mm-hmm. So um earlier in the podcast, I said I had two golden rules and I never actually got around to the second one. So the first one was I stay in my lane in terms of energetics and like not, I don't view people as competition. So like, I don't, I, I don't know, but it, like, so he's like, Oh, did you see that? Like, so-and-so is offering this course and like this thing that like kind of sounds like yours. And I'm like, Nope, I have no idea. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, somebody will send me a screenshot of like some post that somebody wrote that was very pointed. And I'll be like, I'll respond to that, you know, in another post. But like, aside from that, I'm so in my own world and lane. Like I have no idea what's going on with anybody. Right. I just, I am very like that. And that keeps me clean because then I'm not, again, I don't really have the tendency to do that, but I'm not ever tempted into that ego place of, um, what is that? Like the comparison. I don't compare myself. And I feel like you lose your own voice when you do that. Like, it's very easy to be like, Oh damn, like I was going to post about that. Now I feel like I can't because they put and you're like, just stay clean. I Just stay clean. Just, just literally everything is inspired action. Um, I don't, I'll set like general ideas and goals for like what I want to do, but I won't even if people are like, please do this, please do this, please do this, like handing at my door. People are telling me all the time what they want from me. And I'm like, I won't do it unless it feels good. So yeah. at some point I just wake up one day and I'm like, you know what feels right. I didn't want to do the masterclass. That wasn't, that is not something that I ever would have come up with on my own. That's like my, it's like my version of hell. Like I, that's a lot of people that I'm not feeling qualified to show up for. I suffer from imposter syndrome. Like, I mean, like all, all that same shit. Right. Mm. And I had the inspired guidance because I've worked with that. Where like, I get this idea and it's like, you should do this. And I'm like, that sounds terrible. Idea. I know you're like, like, do I have to do this? And, but you're like, this is not going to leave me alone. So I either have to do it or like, it'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so you get used to, to listening to this inner knowing. And so when that goes off and I, and it's like, and I joke and I'm like, well, it's my ADHD that says that I can talk about this. And maybe it is, but it, it really, it's that like, and here's this next piece. And so the second that the second golden rule that I have is when I think about what I want, and it's really funny because Fallon Taylor just did a TikTok on this, and I was like, oh shit, like we do the same thing. It's really funny. If anybody follows her on TikTok, she's really funny. But she um anytime and I and I did this with my husband, I did this with my jobs, I've done this with my clients. Anytime I've wanted to manifest something. I think about the thing. So like, I wanted to be, I wanted this business this year to get to a place where I had apprentice trainer so that they could do so for me. And I wanted to get it to a place where I was teaching a lot of vets because I very strongly believe that that's kind of how we're going to change the industry, right? Like they will always be the industry leaders. And I have a lot of very respect and gratitude for them. So I want to show up for them. They're my priority. So instead of just throwing that out there and manifesting it, what that looked like for me was I would kind of have a picture in my head of what that would look like. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it was like, okay, but like, who do I have to be for that? Mm -hmm. Like, who is the person that I have to be to me that I would be good, that I would be worthy of having apprentices trainers who, what version of myself would I have to be, to be worthy of having the respect of a veterinarian to call me in. Right. Mm -hmm. It's so I did. I just, I focus on doing a lot of work around that, making sure that I am approachable, that I'm well-spoken. I didn't even actually roll out the true apprenticeship where like I'm charging anything for these people because I wasn't in a place that I could show up for them consistently. So I made sure that my ducks were all in a row and I'm like, cool. So now that I can show up hundred percent, now we can roll this out. And they're all so grateful for it. Like, yeah, vets are like, my whole wait list is a bunch of veterinarians literally all over the world. And I think that that's so amazing to be like, mm-hmm. I've, I did such good work to be very clean and very collaborative, right? Like I very, I made it a, my, my essence throughout the year of being like, Hey, like I'm approachable. I want to help you. Mm-hmm. I will tell them 
everything, right? And not hold anything back. And and that that's how you manifest. So like, you know, and you can want your dream guy and you can want your dream job, but like there's and and again, I still like low-key coach people, but I had one of my friends, she was like, God, I'm so sick of being single. I'm so sick of being single. I'm just so ready to like, I'm just ready to meet like the one forever. And he's gonna be this and he's gonna be that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, cool. And I was like, how do you feel about how do you feel about yourself naked? Mm. And she was like, like, what do you mean? And I was like, like, how do you feel about like being naked with the lights on? And it just effed her whole world up. I don't know why I said F. We've sworn this whole podcast, but <laughs> it effed her whole world up. Um, and she was like, well, what does that have to do with anything? And I was like, well, presumably you're going to sleep with him because he's going to be your forever person. So that means that at some point, this human that you're trying to call into your life is going to see you naked. And so if you subconsciously think that you need to cover yourself up all the time and you're not energetically open to somebody seeing you naked, you're probably not going to be able to. And I mean, we just, and that was, again, she's a friend. So like, we like went right to the heart of it. Usually I'm a lot nicer to people. Um, but it's stuff like that. And she was like, oh my God, you're right. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been trying so hard to do this, but like, I'm, you know, I'm ashamed about being naked. And actually like, I would be, I don't actually want somebody in my space. Like, and and then we, you know, you start going through and you start dissecting all of the things about yourself where like, actually you're not the version of of you that would be an energetic match for the person that you want or for the job. Yeah, absolutely. And so work on that. Mm. And if you just work on that, then everything else falls into place because then you're good, right? There's no resistance anymore. Yeah. So what hit me really hard when I was like in the mode of manifesting. And this was like a couple of years ago where I was like doing it to get a boyfriend. And like, that was just why I was doing it. And uh, the one thing hit me was like, you can only manifest what's in alignment with your self-worth. And I was like, shit. Damn. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. okay. Like I've got some, got some things to do. And even it's interesting you saying that story, that was actually helpful for me, not from the naked point of view, that point of view, but from the, like being visible, like even me, me wanting to have this like global business, like, which it already, it's already global business, but like growing it, making it bigger. I need to be more visible. And I have like, in a way been hiding and like not putting myself out there as much as I can. So it's just like, interesting. Huh? It sucks. Yeah. Because there are pieces and it it doesn't all suck, right? But there are pieces that come in where you're like, no, kind of liked it when I didn't have it so many. Yes. <laughs> my my favorite, my favorite messages that I'll get, this is my sarcasm, um, are the people that will be like, I'm really disappointed in that message that you said. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I'm like, I'm really disappointed in your tone. I made some post about, um, this was a while ago. This is before shit blew up even. And, um, about like horses that are tail switching and showing like obvious pain behaviors and like, stop being a Neanderthal. Like we're like, we, like we've evolved from them. Like, like we're like, this is no longer, ever, but I, I made the phrase, like we can stop being Neanderthals. Like, you know, that we're not doing that. And somebody was like, I'm just so disappointed that you chose to say that because, you know, I mean, people are showing up for the And I agree, like, you know, that's fine. Maybe some people don't actually understand that and that's okay. But mine was like a general, like to professionals, like we're like in the Olympics and we're seeing this shit, like, mm-hmm. come on now. Um, and I will, for anybody that's listening, if you ever send me a message and it starts with, I'm disappointed, or if that's in it, it literally does nothing inside of me, but make me want to do that more. I have an absolute switch that goes off that goes, oh, neat. (laughs) You're like, how can I be more polarizing? How can I possibly piss you off more now? And it's, you know, that's, that's like the, the cranky foster kid in me. That's like, I'm going to rebel. Um, I think I saw that post, but I think, um, yeah, I I remember uh, that f- if I'm being honest, it felt twingy for me because I, I think it's just because people re- I know that people reading it assume that everything is always about them. And it's like, yeah, I work with so many people who are doing a good job and they would read something like that and be like, Oh my goodness, the world is ending. And it's like, it's not about you. <laughs> it's not about, about you. Like, not about you. Oh. And again, Oh, and here's another thing with manifesting and, and stuff like this. And it's not even just manifesting. It's just like how to handle life. Right. So context is everything. 
So the day before I did that post, I also did a huge post about essentially what we were saying in the Olympics and the top levels, right? And it's all of these pain behaviors in these spaces and there's this and that, blah, 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 you know? And so that was like a follow-up post yeah, yeah, to that. Yeah. Yeah. And so like if people see a thought in big context, but they don't know that, right? Because not, not everything's it. in context. The same thing, like my 12 year old, he thinks that the entire world is el- is ending because, you know, the ice cream spilled and he's not going to get that today. And like, oh my God, his whole life's over. Mm-hmm. In context, we could just go to the store and buy another thing of ice cream. I know that he mm-hmm. doesn't quite see the world that way. And so, and even as adults, when we see stuff like, mm-hmm. and, again, and this is where, you know, having had a lot of loss and grief in my life, my context for things is like pretty big. Yeah. But so when stuff goes down and there's this like this big drama fest, right? And people are like super upset and there's like all this high energy and like people are like swarming these energies over like a fucking Facebook post. Mm, yeah. That's neat. I will tell you that when I was like lying over my, you know, like dragon and I'm like lying on my best friend's dead body, I can tell you that I didn't give a fuck about what anybody thought about a Facebook post. And like not to be morbid and to throw these things out there, but like that's my that's kind of my like um, weather vein for mm-hmm. caring about things. Like I will sit there and be like, what I care about that. Yeah, that's true. Wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if the answer is no, then don't let that stress you out that much. Mm-hmm. Like, if, damn it, dude. Like people get so worked up about things that are so inconsequential. Just yeah. absolutely, you know. Yeah, and it's I- like, it's out of context, but it's like those two things. If you can think about the context and you can think about, yeah, like, is it really worth it in comparison? It's not. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, putting it in, into perspective and like um, looking at that person's intention, like, especially if you're, there's someone that you follow like a lot of, do you know what I mean? Like if you're watching, if you're seeing someone post something and you, you have a general vibe of them and they post one thing or do something one time or a couple of times, we're mm-hmm. human. We might make a mistake or it could just be, you're not seeing the full picture. Right. Right. Totally. We're like, if you had somebody that you were working with, like, like now, you know, me pretty well. Yeah. So like if there was somebody that you were working with and they were working with their horse and they were swishing their tail and they were trying to do stuff, like, was that post directed at them? No, no. But is it directed at all of the FBI horses that are going out that are passing all these soundness checks that should be the epitome of what we're working with? Absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. bet you're, you yeah. know, and does it offend them? Sure. Good. It should, you should be offended. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but again, you know, that's context and getting to know somebody. And so, yeah. So when somebody comes up and they're just like, well, I'm just really disappointed because you never say anything negative. And I just feel like you're all love and light all the time. And I'm like, and sometimes I have a kill switch. Mm. Um, My love and light comes because I am also, I was a foster kid and I was raised on the streets and I love people and I want to show up for them, but I also have a point where I'm don't care. Yeah. And I was like, and I'm allowed to do that because I'm human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And like, for those listening that like see things and easily get triggered by posts or like feel like they have to go down like twenty billion rabbit holes because they feel like everything's directed at them, and I have been there, and sometimes I still go there when I have a moment. Like, it's just a call to action for you to turn inward and be like, "Is this relevant for me? Mm-hmm. Does this feel true for me? Am I happy? Is my horse happy? Do we?" If not, like you're good. <laughs> you're good. You're, you're totally okay. Good. <laughs> and it's okay to get triggered by stuff. Yeah. Like I, I've been in therapy a long time. Um, <laughs> and so I think that, you know, when I do, and I still, I totally get triggered all the time. So like, I'm not above that. I just, again, I have a bigger context. So now when I get triggered, I'm mostly curious about it. And I'm like, that's interesting. Me too. So I'm yeah. kind of like, it's like being a, yeah. curious observer over my life. And so something comes up and I get triggered by it. And I'm like, that's really interesting mm-hmm. where I'm coming from. And I, I've got, I've got enough tools now that I can kind of like self myself, you know, down there, I can walk through it and you generally find it and then let it go. And if I can't find it, then I go to therapy. I go, you know, I go to somebody else or, you know, one of my good okay. girlfriends, man, my ex-husband came in out of nowhere and I had like, it's been years and I had this just, I did not think that I still was going to have a trauma response over like him requesting to see like the kids or anything like that. Full board trauma. If he ever stalks me and listens to this, you gave me a full board trauma response. I had a full trauma response and I had to respond to him. And I sent the message that I wrote knowing 
that that message was not going to be the correct. I should not hit send. Do not hit send. But I wrote it. And then I sent it to Tara and our friend Ashley. And I was like, I need you guys to edit this. And I need you to, because they knew the whole context. And I said, here's the context. Here's all the things. And I'm like, I need you to edit it. That's mm-hmm. not me because I'm not, because I am not capable of doing this. I'm not emotionally mature enough to handle the situation. Um, and they did. And then what, what got back was like in alignment with me. We agreed mm-hmm. it. Everything was fine. Um, and, and then the moral of this story is like, I mean, this is recent, like stuff will still come up that will trigger Absolutely. us. That will completely derail us. And it's like totally okay. Like how to respond to things. Um, if you don't feel like you can respond, like I, I try very hard to not respond to things out of a closed energy. So if I'm in a closed energy and I can feel it, in my solar plexus where my body's like, mm, yeah. what you're saying does not feel, you know, like you're just mad. You're acting out of ego. You're acting out of fear. You're acting out of trauma. Right. So I know those signals within my body. If you don't know those signals within your body, please work with like Felicity or somebody to teach you how to do it. It's life changing. Um, but I waited and I reached out for help and I let other people help me with that until I could be in a receiving good open, like, okay, this is good. And then send it. Right. And these are, that's how we handle things with the horses. That's how I handle yes. things, you know, social media. It's like, that is the, and the more, the more practice and it takes time and it takes yeah. practice. It's shitty. It's such shitty work. It is. Um, but it, I mean, it, it changes everything in your life. So exactly. Yeah, I feel like doing all of that work and just continually continuing to just get curious and unravel the layers like that allows you to step into that kindness and compassion and that empathy and all of those things because you can understand how deeply layered things are and you can understand mm-hmm. your own behavior and you like that itself is so like transformative and powerful and it just allows the connection on every level to be so much deeper. And I love what you shared in that experience. And I always talk about like, give yourself what you need. Like if something's (laughs) coming to you, what's the message behind it? What do you need? And if you don't know what you need, sit with that question until you figure something out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you're really unsure, find someone to help you. Find someone to help you. And, you know, very rarely, and again, this comes from context of having like dealt with actual emergencies, but like very (laughs) human nature, particularly for people pleasers, we are very into like the, oh my God, I have to respond right away. Right. Like, yeah, it took me all over 24 hours to respond to that text message where the inside trauma, like ex-wife and me was like, oh my God, I have to respond to him right away. Or it's going to be catastrophic. The reality of the situation is I didn't have to, no, you I know, I, I don't have to work with that horse that I'm, I'm feeling, you know, whatever with that moment that day, I actually, you actually do have time very rarely are any of these situations in any space requiring you to respond immediately? Mm-hmm. So even when it feels like it. And so, you know, you go through and be like, is this an emergency? Can you finish eating your lunch before you respond? Make sure your blood sugars, you know, like, okay, do you need to bounce a couple ideas off of a friend? Do you need to go take a shower? Do you need to go take a walk? Like it's yeah. the problem is still going to be there. Yeah. Unfortunately, but it still will be there. So take the time to go get what you need yeah get the resolve get into that energy and then respond to it and that also takes fucking work to learn to be like actually okay like actually you do have time yeah it's so interesting that you say that especially from this situation where it's a person sending you something like if he was saw you in person he would never just go hey celeste you would have a conversation you would like he would find the right moment like whereas people have so much for permission slip to be like it's so disappointing. Whatever post you make, boom. <laughs> right. Or like, yeah. hey, I want to do this with you. And it's just like, whoa, if we were talking in person, you would never come in that hard. No, you wouldn't. That's keyboard warriors all the way. Um, oh. Yeah, you yeah, you would not. You would have, and you know, and again, that's what we have living in this era of social media where we have people that genuinely, it's like they've forgotten how to have human conversations and relationships. Um I'll get, I'll get messages. And I, 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 I've gotten to a place now where I just can kind of stop responding to people that are like that. Like if I don't, like, I, I won't argue. I very rarely will even put up an argument. I'm like, mm, I'll just delete the comment. I'm like, I don't want to deal with this. You're like literally wasting my time. But sometimes when I do feel like engaging in it, I send the person a voice memo. <laughs> yeah. I love voice memos. 
So if anybody sends me hate mail and especially my messenger or a text and I get it, I will always respond with a voice memo <laughs> because I'm like, here is all of this. Would you like to get on a phone call? That's the other one is it's like, what's your phone number? Let's get on a phone call. Let's get on a Zoom. Oh, you think that I'm damaging horses? Well, please let's get on a Zoom session and I, I'll, I'll give you a free lesson. I don't even charge you. I'll just give you a free lesson and then you can tell me how crazy I am. Um, mm. And this is, and this is how I respond to all of them. Because Have they ever like taken you up on that? No, ever. Not so once. Isn't it though? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I had somebody um, like the recent one with somebody joined the masterclass lightly perused it, decided that um, there wasn't enough information, how-to videos. And so she emailed and she was like, hey, I didn't get the how-to videos. I don't, and like nowhere, just, you know, if anybody's not joined, like you can join the website, it very clearly says what it is. And they were like, this is just, it's very confusing. There's no how-to videos and I'd like my money back and ran and handled it. And she wrote back and she was like, hey, she's like, I'm, you know, I'm so sorry. Like Celeste has a policy where like, if you join and like, it's just really not working out, like she, we can totally put that money towards a lesson with her. And, you know, she's happy to, mm -hmm. I honor that some people learn differently. Right. And so, yeah. cause, cause well, what she had said in the message was she was really upset because she spent $150 that she wanted to spend. She really needed help with her horse is what yes. she said. Yes. I don't do this for everybody. I don't offer yeah. free lessons for everybody, but she was like, I really need help with my horse. You know, I had, this is how much money I had. I spent it. I don't, I'm not able to, you know, whatever. Mm. And I'm like, dude, I totally understand people have different learning curves. Tell her I'll give her a lesson. So she reaches out, she tells her that she'll do that. And then the lady comes back with like, just basically what a piece of shit I am and how this is just, I'm just a scam artist and I'm this and I'm that and the other thing. And Rhiannon's like, but didn't you say that your horse needed help and that you joined this because you were trying to get this work to help your horse and that it just wasn't working out? So you're like the creator herself is reaching out saying, I will give you a lesson and I will help you on a Zoom. You don't want that. And then it just con it just continued this beratement of mm -hmm. I've been doing this for years. And like it was it was awful. It was so fascinating to me. And I was just mm -hmm. like, but this is what I'm talking about, though. So people she was, and it was the same person that was like, I was put off for it you know, from the beginning, because she mentioned that she used bungees or whatever, like in a past life. And I'm like, but isn't it interesting though, that the, the only people that start shit are the people that are unwilling to have a phone call. Mm -hmm. They say things like, well, I really want to help my horse, but you won't get on a free zoom lesson and like actually, you know, go through things like, yeah, it's really weird. It's a yeah. weird because they're really just looking for drama. And so that, that, so that's, that's how I handle it is I'm like, let's get on a phone call. Let's get on a zoom or I'll send you a voice message. And I'm going to humanize this entire thing because you can sit at a screen and talk shit all you want, but like, really? let's humanize each other. Let's talk about what's actually going on. And that's, I don't know. That's how I do it. But yeah, again. no, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's just interesting, like the behavior of people who respond in that way. And it's just very clear that it's just like, they're not really willing to take any responsibility. None. No, so it's just, and it's just, just interesting. And yeah. because I've gone through a lot of trauma, like I've had moments where I was totally a shitty person. I've been really defensive. I've read things the wrong way. I've, I've got messages from people where I literally did, like couldn't even see half of the words that they were saying. Cause I just put whatever trauma lens I had over it you know yeah. I've been there I've been that person and so when people lash out like that I don't I also don't be like oh what a piece of shit this human is I mean like it's that's I don't necessarily think warm fuzzy thoughts about them but I'm also in the same breath being like well mm -hmm. what what are they going through what's going on in their personal life that like totally. they like they get off on attacking me like that's really interesting that's a they must be going through something because happy people don't act like that exactly. people that in their lives like we don't behave that way so always having that lens too when you're trying to broadcast and get bigger when you reach your bigger reach yeah 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 you... totally and yeah it, it's like with the horses as well like horses that are in pain express those mm -hmm. behaviors like it's not just coming out of nowhere there's like other layers underneath but no I think it's interesting and I think it's um good to have these like open conversations about all of these things to once again, like humanize the whole experience and just bring everything back to that, like ground level of being like, we're all people, we're all human. Like we all have our shit. We all go through things and it's just up to you, whether you are willing to take responsibility, put yourself out there, get the support or get the help that you need in order to like work through your own stuff and show up mm -hmm. in the way that you want to show up and then like commit to the things that you want to do. Mm-hmm.
really and it's a lot of commitment and it's really hard but I think that it's super super worth it every time I agree well thank you so much for jumping on and like having this conversation with me I think it's really important and like it's just good to have this because once again like I feel like in the equestrian industry like there's not a lot of conversations that I've heard like this on a public platform um and I think it's just good to be open (laughs) Like there's a lot of like parallels and, and things like that in other industries, but it's just like sometimes people just need to hear from the person that's actually in the same like industry that they are to be like, oh, damn, like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And it, we're, we're all human every single, I mean, I'm not, I've, I've got like a decent following, but like I'm nobody of consequence compared to some of the other ones. But even like the the big, big, huge, you know, however many thousands, multi-thousands of followers, like, we're all just human and we all deal with the same thing. And yeah. I do think that I kind of, I like to break the, you know, whatever that I my you know, head injury there it went. What's the term when somebody, um, when you're on TV and you're not supposed to look at the camera, but you look at the camera, that lens, like it's called breaking the something. Somebody listening to this will know what I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, there's like, a, there's a whole thing. Okay. Not ever look at the camera, right? Um, but I feel like I like to do that in this industry on, but like, let's talk about these things that we don't, we're not supposed to talk about. Like, we're not going to have, I don't ever want people to have this idea of that I'm perfect and I have all my shit together. And if you don't have your marketing a certain way that kind of shows that yeah. you're also not going to be respected in the industry either. And so I try to be very careful. So like, all of my posts aren't drama and vulnerable slabs of my heart, but every once in a while, I throw one of those down there to just remind people like, yeah, no, it's okay to get ugly. Like yeah. it, you, you have to do that. And so I love having conversations like this, where it's like, let's actually talk about real world, like mm. actual situations that are really sad or angry or ugly or traumatizing. And it's like mm. taking that, that lens off of being like, no, no, we all deal with it too. It's okay. And yeah, that's, also how you're going to be successful and that the horse world is is one of the worst ones I think about being very hush hush around um any real shit going on so yeah I I think it's just because of all of the layers of conditioning around like people how people have previously been like taught to handle horses and view horses like it, it's yeah it's really like old old school ways of like viewing things like it the industry is like struggled to evolve because people are mm-hmm. so like caught up in tradition and doing things in a certain way and we've always done it this way and like you like the showing them who's boss kind of iterations and then you treat people the same way and it's just like there's been a whole string of things and then yeah there's just a lot of layers <laughs> like really? we keep saying <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so glad to have it with you. Well, thank you for joining me and I look forward to chatting again soon. Yeah. All right. Bye guys.